Due to y'all, we come with three true disturb disturbing police horror stories, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like I feel like like being a police, I feel like it's cool until a certain point. Like I feel like like police see a lot of shit. Like can y'all imagine pulled up to like a car crash and like like you just seen like the most crazy like I couldn't do it, I'm not gonna lie. Like hey oh my god. Not nah, hell, I ain't gonna lie, this this, this like it depends what kind of horror story they talk about, cause they talk about like, like pull up to like a uh, a car, like a car show, and somebody sh them blew up or some, then 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 that's valid. But or if it's like, or if it's like um chasing like a criminal or some bullshit. But look, how y'all been? Um, I feel like I've been chilling, got my hair redone. And I feel I feel like I'm feeling handsome. I mean, hey, hey, you gotta be handsome, like no matter what. But like like there's something about like getting a fresh cut. Didn't get your hair did. I don't know. But look, um, local new subscribers, new people, let's go ahead and get to the video. <laughs> Story one by Richard B. I work nights for the sheriff's department in Bergen County. I've been on the force for two years. Okay. I haven't seen too much craziness, aside from late night drug arrests, a few robbery calls, and a few assault calls. She like, what? Northeastern Bergen County is pretty low crime after all, so those are usually the worst calls I deal with. Uh -huh. There was this one night that I received a disturbance call to investigate a scream that came from a house nearby. Usually a call like this would mean a domestic dispute, or even just something as harmless as people drinking and being too loud. Okay. I arrived to the house though. And I had to confirm twice that it was the correct house, because none of the lights were on. There was a car in the driveway though, a blue Toyota Sienna minivan. Someone was home. I went over to knock on the door a few times. The neighbor must have seen my car, because he came out and walked over, reporting that he was the one to call the police. He told me he heard a blood curdling like, ah! scream from the house, oh. and that the woman who Never. lives there lives alone, but occasionally had her boyfriend over, making it slightly more concerning. I tried the doorknob now, which was locked. I then made my way around the house, trying all the windows, which were all locked. All but one. One of the backyard windows. It was already slid completely up. Enough for someone to climb through. This was a red flag, considering every other window was closed. Mm. I requested backup to the scene, and once I got confirmation, I climbed into the house through the window. Like, pause, pause, pause real quick. Before we even get to the story, can y'all imagine like, like you, you know how I usually, like, you the person that call people to, like, to detect the, the, the noise? Like, but you got, like, but it said, like, you a police, and, like, a police officer, and I, you gotta go discover what the noise is. Nigga, I can never be that call. Like, somebody be like, oh my god, I just heard a scream, come over. I'm like, I'm like, Sheriff, on dispatch, we have a, um, a blood, wait, wait what she said? A blood curling scream at, at, uh, 102, uh, Bearberry Lane, like, cause I'm not, I'm not going in, like, what, what do I look like, what, no, no. I started to flick every light on that I could find in the house, starting in the kitchen, and working my way to the living room. He just like, yes, it's advisable for police to turn on the lights when investigating buildings. I hope so. What you see in TV shows and movies where they leave the lights off is only done for suspense. Mm. I called out for the woman, trying to assure her it's okay, police were here. So at that time, I still didn't know what exactly the situation was, other than she was reported screaming. Mm. There was no response, no matter how loud I yelled. The first floor was clear, so there was only the upstairs left to check. I wanted to wait for backup to arrive, because I was nervous what I'd find up there. But I'd also not forgive myself if I waited and wasted precious time that I could have used to save this woman from a possible medical emergency. Okay. Before going up the stairs, I unlocked the front door for when backup would arrive. I then walked up the carpeted stairs quietly, and as I got halfway up the stairs, I peered over the ledge onto the second floor. There were four doors up there. I flicked on the light switch in the hallway, and called out one more time. I heard a creak type sound come from behind one of the doors, so she had to be in there. I opened the door, and it was a bedroom. The light was off, but the light from the hall was plenty to see a woman laying in bed under the covers. I saw the back of her head. I walked over to her to make sure she was okay, but as I was close, I noticed dark stains that soaked the other side of the covers. The side of her I couldn't see from the door. I yanked the covers off the woman and realized it was blood, and she'd been stabbed multiple times, but she was still breathing. I grabbed my walkie and reported a stabbing, requesting immediate backup and an ambulance. 
The creak I heard moments before suddenly made no sense if this woman was in bed like... The fuck? The... See, the, hey, you about to piss me off. What you mean, they make... Nigga, it clearly wasn't her, dumb... It. What? This. And given she was unconscious, someone placed her in the bed most likely. I did a 360 in place, looking around the room. There was a closet. It was instinctively the first place I'd think to look. Oh, uh, do I had my gun drawn and had my hand on the doorknob for five seconds, gathering the courage to yank the door open. When I finally did, there was no one inside. Mm. I turned around again to look at the bed, at the bleeding woman. Then I thought, the bed. I got on my knees to be level with the bottom of the bed. I yanked the bed wrap covering the bottom of the bed up, and I was then eye to eye with a man wearing a face mask covering the lower half of his Nigga, imagine? You, like, you, yo, 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 like, I don't even think y'all understand how, like, imagine you lift the fucking covers up, and you looking at nigga dead in his, uh, like, I, 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 I don't know who'd be more scary, him or me, I feel like, I'm a, I, 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 I might, I, I, I lucky might have a heart attack. Space, I shrieked and yelled, show me your hands. He slowly he raised his hands above his head as Shut much as he could. <laughs> I got up and told him to get out from under the bed slowly and made sure he wasn't holding the knife. I had him stand in the corner with his hands up until my backup came. I wasn't about to try and handcuff him in there alone when he could have any weapon on his person. Or somebody else. I told backup to meet me upstairs, and when they entered the house, I called out to them. Only then did I place the man under arrest. An ambulance arrived not too long after, and the woman was rushed to the hospital, and she managed to survive being stabbed six times. The man who did it was in fact her boyfriend, which I didn't find too surprising, honestly. What? The man had found out that she cheated on him with his friend, and when he called her about it, she broke up with him over the phone, and this must have caused the man to snap. Let's talk about it. 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 Like, like, yo, 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 yo. Like, say your girl cheat on you, right? And like, with your friend, and then she like, like she going crazy. Like she like, yeah, yeah that's why. Da, da, da. Like she going crazy. Nah, I ain't gonna lie, stabbing is crazy. No matter how, like, cause like the fuck you to like take it out, keep going. Ear, 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 ear. Like you, like you. Nah, that's that's demonic. I ain't gonna lie. Like I'd rather get shot, cause I feel like. That's more cowardly than like, getting stabbed. Like, I feel like you really about that shit when you stabbing somebody. Like, there's no way. There's no way. So, she cheated, so he felt like he... Nah, that's wild. Like, I know people who, like, who play like that, but the fact that she, this nigga actually did that is actually wild. That's wild. Like, what? Nah, there's no way. There's no way. Y'all, value your life. Look, 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 no matter what, look, I'm being for real now. I, look, I know I play a lot, but I'm being for real. I'm being for real right now. Look, no matter which, what your significant other do, is it worth their life? So say say, say she cheated, right? You go stab her. You go shoot her. What now? You in like, you in jail for the rest of your life. Not, now what? You're like, oh my, but your ego, your ego look like it's a little better, but you in prison for, come on now. Ego, I'm telling y'all, ego, like ego, ego go kill a lot of folks. I'm telling you. I'm just very thankful the woman survived. Yeah, facts. Don't cheat though. Like, do not cheat. Cause you know, you know how many, how many like feelings in that? Come on now. This story was told to me by my best friend's uncle, who works the night shift as a police officer in our city. Okay. A year or so ago, Mike, my best friend's uncle, was out on his nightly patrol with his partner Steve. They've been working together for years, and they're both army veterans. So they're very level-headed and calm people, perfect for being police officers. When they got a call from a landlord at an apartment complex complaining about one of his tenants, they didn't really expect anything bad. They get calls like that all the time, so they headed over to see what was going on. When they arrived, the landlord greeted them outside. It was probably one or two in the morning, and everyone from the complex was standing out in the grass, which was odd. Everybody? The landlord approached Mike and Steve, and started to rant about one of their neighbors being crazy and turning all the water on in his apartment. Apparently he was some guy in his 30s, and he'd been acting weird lately. Mm. Mike could see that there was water seeping out from the front door to the place, and decided they had to go in and do a welfare check on the guy. When they walked in, water was pouring down the stairs and clearly flooding the building which meant that this water had to have been turned on for hours to cause this kind of damage 
They climbed to the second story and knocked on the door where the water was gushing out from. The landlord told them that the tenant's name was Adam, and so they pounded on the door calling his name. No one answered for a couple minutes, and so they decided to break the door down. When they did, they spotted Adam standing in his kitchen. All of the sinks, the shower and the toilet from the bathroom and a hose from outside were gushing water everywhere. Adam was standing there shaking. His eyes were wide like he was terrified to move. Adam, what's going on? Are you alright? Mike asked while his partner Steve walked further inside to check everything out. Steve walked into the bathroom to turn off the water and to make sure no one else was in the apartment. Mike slowly approached Adam, who seemed terrified because he was shaking so much. He didn't even look at Mike as he approached. Talk to me, Adam. Again, he was asked what was wrong, and he finally stuttered out that there are people in the walls. Mike didn't hear what he was saying at first, but as he got closer, Adam started to hear it over and over, louder and louder. There are people in the walls, until he was almost screaming it, getting himself worked up. Steve walked into the bedroom next and was clearing the room. He checked the closet and noticed something as he turned on the light. There was a very faint line that ran across the wall. At first he didn't think anything of it, but then he heard what Adam was screaming and a sinking feeling hit his gut. The more he stared at it, the more he realized that the line was in the shape of a door cut out of the wall. It clearly wasn't meant to be there. Mike was about to lead Adam out of the apartment when Steve suddenly called to him, you better take a look at this. Mike went into the other room to see Steve pointing his gun at the wall in the bedroom, clearly freaked out. They both approached the door, guns raised while Adam started to cry in the back room. Steve quickly pulled a piece of wall this back and they both froze when three sets of eyes stared back at them. Three people were pressed together in this tiny space in the wall, their faces painted in weird patterns. Both Steve and Mike ordered them out and handcuffed each one. By that time, backup had arrived and some other police officers got Adam out of there. They led the three downstairs and sent them off to jail. Mike and Steve were deeply disturbed by the whole exchange. It was only made worse when a couple months later, they found out that the three people on the wall were from some crazy cult out in the woods. They were trying to get Adam to join them. They preyed on him because they knew he had a past history of being mentally unstable. They were trying to scare him. He turned on all the water in an attempt to flush them out of his own home. To this day, Mike and Steve say that this was the most disturbing call. That he did what? Come on now. Come on now. He, he tried to flush them out of his own home. Hey, hey, you know what? I'm gonna I'm let it slide. They've ever been on. I'm a, this one time, this one time, I let it slide. B, B. This one time when I was working a 12 hour overnight shift, I went out on a call for a suspicious person walking house to house, knocking on doors and saying things to people through their doors or to their doorbell cameras. I arrived to the man's house who called it in and he explained better in person that it was a middle aged woman with long wiry hair holding something behind her back going door to door yelling at people to open up and mumbling to herself. The man who called the police had a ring doorbell camera, and so he showed me the footage that it caught. The woman came up to the door, looked at the camera for a few minutes, literally, then pressed the button. She started speaking into the mic of the doorbell, and the homeowner started talking back through his phone, starting by asking who she is and what she wants. She kept saying, open the door, she needs blood, and would smile and cackle each time she said it. All right. I would have, I would have, I would have, I would have came, I'm like, alright, and the door would have, pit, pit, pit. Like, 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 easy, easy, you on my property, number one, two, it's like, what, like, what time is it, it's night time, I don't play, like, like, it's, like, you got, you got, there's two, there's two sides of me, there's morning and night, they get, pick which one, if morning, I might let you slide, at night, they, hey, I'm in a different mode, cause look, you on my property, I don't know who you is, you talking about you want blood, Shit, my gun do too. So look, look, look. Who gonna get it first? Uh, Cause look, it's gonna be me every time. Look, cause you, you, you don't know my house. I know, I know my whole house. I look, look, look. I could, I could, I could go. Look, look. You see the, you see the, um, the, the, uh, what this is? The roof. Look, I could roll up that. Boo, boo. I'm gonna tell you, I'm John Wick. Stop playing with me. Like, look, 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 look. I know we in the burbs, but look, look, look. It's not sweet over here. I'm from, I'm from the hood. Shawty, Shawty, look, look, we got money now. We up. I would, I would do, I would do you the worst way. 
go stop playing. You might go to somebody else's house. Go to um go to Adam house over there. Adam 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 might go my Adam will go try to um let it slide. I'm not. The the only thing I'm sliding is your body across the, across the floor once once I'm done with you. So the police can get you. Stop playing. When he threatened to call the police, she left and started basically punching the door and trying to remove the ring doorbell camera from the wall. It was impossible to tell if the threat of calling the police is what eventually got her to leave. But when she did, the man saw that she went to the house next door. This was when he actually called 911. The footage was absolutely bone chilling. It was like a scene from a scary movie. And it was impossible to tell what she was holding behind her back because of the creepy way she backed away from the door to the sidewalk, still facing the doorbell camera the entire time. There were two or three other units on this now, driving around the area trying to find the woman. It was basically a mini manhunt now, and the description being used was possibly armed and dangerous woman. I checked the nearby houses on foot really quickly, and got back in my car and started patrolling the area as well. None of us could find the woman. And then we got a report of a breaking and entering nearby. Someone had called 911 to report that someone had entered their house with a weapon, and the caller was hiding in their bedroom upstairs. The caller also had a doorbell camera and was able to see the woman entering the house through the front door, but not before looking into the camera for a few moments again. I arrived to the house just about the same time as another unit. Entering the house was easy as the front door was left unlocked, of course. We had to enter with caution, though with guns drawn because we didn't know how dangerous this woman was or what she could be armed with. As we entered and the foyer was clear, another officer and I shouted that the police were here and we ordered the intruder to come out with her hands up. Then there was a scream for help from upstairs. My adrenaline was rushing as it does in any situation like this involving armed suspects. We ran up the stairs and followed the screams for help. They led us to the master bedroom. The husband unlocked and opened the bedroom door as we got upstairs, the husband of the couple sitting and hiding in there. They hadn't left the bedroom since the woman had entered the house, and they said she had been clawing and banging at the door only a few minutes ago, and that they didn't hear her leave, let alone even go down the stairs. We had to check every other room in the upstairs for her, and in one of the corner bedrooms, in the pitch blackness, we heard a cackling sound. Not being able to see her, but to hear her, it was downright spine chilling. I flicked on the light to the bedroom, and she was there sitting on the bed, already looking at me and smiling. She had a huge knife in her hand, and there was blood soaking the bed sheets that she was sitting on. It was her blood. She had just cut one of her wrists. She started saying exactly what she was saying on the first guy's doorbell camera, that she needs blood. We didn't know who she meant, until noticing the little doll sitting between her legs. It was a little girl's doll, covered in the woman's blood. Bruh. We yelled at her to drop the knife with our guns drawn on her. Ugh. She just laughed and kept saying what she was saying. Real nasty. There was clearly something very wrong with her, and reasoning with her didn't seem like it would be possible, but we tried anyway. Stop trying. I asked her who is this she she keeps referencing, and tried to talk nice to her, saying she doesn't have to hurt herself or anybody else and that we're there to help her. But as she continued to stare at us, mainly at me, and laugh and keep muttering barely understandable sentences, I got increasingly nervous. I had my gun aimed at the giant knife in her hand, contemplating shooting it out of her hand, considering if that was a viable, safe option, but neither of us were expecting what happened next. The crazed woman sprang off the bed and made this growling sound as she was about to lunge at me and presumably attack me as her knife was raised in the air. I reacted the only way I could in the moment and I shot at her twice, both times hitting her in the arm, as even though I was still trying to have my sight aimed on the knife, I wasn't expecting her to just jump up suddenly. She dropped the knife and started to scream and cry as she grabbed her arm. We took this moment to subdue her and place her in cuffs. We had to get her an ambulance immediately before she bleed out. From the hospital, she would later be transported to a local jail. She was later found not guilty on all charges by reason of insanity. She's currently a patient at a mental asylum in my city. The horror that every party involved in this incident had to go through was unimaginable. From all the people who were scared to open their doors to a crazed woman welding something unknown behind her back, to the couple that actually almost fell victim to her in their own house, to myself and the other officer that were on the scene before she was in custody. Yeah. It was the scariest experience of my 10 years being a police officer. 10 years is crazy. Like, like I don't understand like how people, like, I, like you gotta be prepared in your own home. And that's sad. Like, like, like people could come in, in your sh and try to kill you. Like, that's crazy. Like, 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 I don't, like, how is the world come to this? That, that's really, that's, 
Like, what was what was like the the moment of when people was like, yeah, let me go break your bro house. Like, 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 damn, like, can I not live in my own home, please? Like, but like, just imagine like what somebody going through. I like, say somebody just lost like a family member, and you just running in home like. Like can I, bro? Can I, can I grieve? Can I, can I chill for like, just a little bit? Damn. But look, if y'all enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all this video. We out. Yeah.